I don't know why I made a <laughs> thumbnail like that. I really don't know if we're going to actually hunt all three species today, but those are the three that are left. Rusa Deer, Eurasian Widgeon, and Bobcat. One I'm generally a fan of. I quite like Rusa Deer. The other two, not so much, but we're at least going to hunt two of them today. We're definitely going to do some Rusa hunting and some Bobcat hunting. If we get to hunt for Widgeon, that'd be great. We'll just see where we are, you know, somewhere near the end of the stream at that point. <laughs> You like it, pizza? I truly- I have no idea why that popped in my head. There was no pre-planning. I was just like, what if I put eyes on them? Just literally simple as that. What's up, Mel? Thank you for the 23 months. Welcome back. Almost the double 12. Nice thumbnail. Why, thank you. I saw a flying moose. Was it a flying moose that goes, like, flying up in the air or, like, flying across the map? Because I think that's still an issue with them. Uh, they collide with, I don't know what, certain terrain, trees, rocks, and then just shoot into the sky. Thought you were Twitch only? I mostly stream on Twitch. YouTube streams generally are limited to just the Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern slot, but for instance, I think it was a Wednesday we did like a six hour moose grinding stream in the lead up to this map's release. Did a good bit of fallow grinding on stream as well here on YouTube on random days, but as far as scheduled streams go, one a week on YouTube and the rest are on Twitch. That thumbnail? I might start doing that more, we'll see. <laughs> Saw a flying cape buffalo, that one I don't think I've seen. Uh, I recently told you about how I made it to 10k without a great one. Still going. No, I haven't got it over 11k now. Was this red deer or fallow deer? Because uh, on yesterday's stream, we definitely talked about a red deer grind that went to 10k. It's Shake the House Thunderstorming right now? Really? For once, we don't have rain. It rained yesterday. What's up, Angelic? Hey, thank you, Black Sheep. It was it was quite a grind. I really so it was a week ago now. Right after the Monday stream, I really wish that I had streamed that day just because I I think it could have happened on stream. But following that, I think it was Wednesday stream we talked about it. In theory, I, I could have done literally anything different during that stream, and maybe that makes the Great One not spawn. So, I guess at the end of the day, I'm glad it worked out the way that it did, but it would have been really cool to get to, you know, see it live. One day it'll happen. I actually almost made a community tab poll today. Basically, it was going to be, should we moose grind or should we go and look for missing diamonds? And I felt like I knew the answer was going to be moose grind, and then I got to thinking like, eh. I don't want to take a week yet before we go and do that. How was the batch of the party? It was good. Um, I think my brother has, I forget, it's either seven or eight groomsmen. And all but one were there and the one lives in Colorado. So that was just kind of going to be the way that it was. But it was kind of a fairly chill thing. We had like a big cookout, a bunch of food. Many beers were consumed. Had some shooting related games before said beers were consumed. And then we were just acting like children and throwing a football around for like two hours and I realized I'm too old for that <laughs> I don't know if it was because I had maybe possibly had eight or nine beers before this but I couldn't like it was almost dark so we were just launching bombs so we could see it in the light of the sky to catch it and I don't know if it was the coordination issues or what but like every time I actually caught the ball I was going to the ground to be able to get to it in time and I was very sore after that. You're in Colorado. Nice. Do you play the Hunter Classic too? I do indeed. In fact, I recorded what's going to be tomorrow's video in the Hunter Classic earlier today. It's not a beginner video. I've done back-to-back -back weeks of kind of like beginner guide content. Going to take a week off with the It's a Let's Go Trophy Hunting uh, video. And then we'll get back to beginner series stuff again. There should be some Rusa to you here pretty soon. I know, Bottom Boy. They know so many people. Like, yesterday I was at my parents. They Like, they got the suits in for all the groomsmen, and they had to, like, measure for alterations and stuff. And one of... It's gonna be my brother's brother-in-law here shortly. They were talking about, like, how many weddings he's been in. I was like, man. I don't know if I want to know that many people. What are you... You just jumped down. Come here. Hey, Casey. You have no idea how old you just made me feel. 
I did nothing. All right, dog acquired. Back we go. Where is that? What is the difference of Call of the Wild and Classic? Um, I would say generally speaking, Call of the Wild's a lot more fast paced. I've seen it said that like, Classic's a hunting game, Call of the Wild's a shooting game, which probably is a little bit derogatory towards Call of the Wild, but I wouldn't say it's inaccurate. Call of the Wild is faster paced in the sense you're gonna find more animals, you're gonna find more trophies, you're probably gonna fire more shots. Classic is closer to a true to life hunting simulation. I Personally, I think Classic's the best hunting game ever made, but Call of the Wild is, what, 10 years newer? It gets more content updates, it's got more species, more maps. So, you know, despite the fact that I'm saying that I think Classic is the best game ever made, we play more Call of the Wild, and it's largely because there's more content and more stuff going on in Call of the Wild. But if you've never tried Classic, I absolutely recommend it. 4,300 kills, so I'm, I'm gonna assume you didn't get it... Was that yesterday's stream? I think you were live yesterday. It may have even been the day before. I was not here most of yesterday. What's up, Hatchet? I almost got the Hunter Classic on my PC, but I suck at using a keyboard and it doesn't support a controller, so I didn't get it. That's fair enough. Um, Classic, as I said, it's, it's kind of slower paced. I think it... It's not bad for like a someone who's not familiar with keyboard and mouse that much because there's not a lot of like quick actions you generally have to do. The nice thing about classic, like tree stand hunting and stuff is very effective in classic, especially with a bow, but you can get away with it uh, with a gun as well. So if you just kind of work your way to your tree stand, sit there, call every now and then, you're going to have stuff come in that you can shoot and I think that's a good way to learn the game. Four diamonds yesterday, no great ones. Have you counted your diamonds? Because I, I haven't even happened. I hadn't counted my diamonds exactly. I know it was around 100. Uh, are you going to grind for another great one, Fallow? I have no intention of doing so. I I guess I might at some stage jump back on Tay and kill a couple hundred Fallow just in case. It's a fairly common trend that once someone gets a great one, the next one comes in a few hundred kills. That's not a guarantee by any stretch. Many grinds, you know, someone kills one, does the second grind, and it takes thousands of kills again, but it does happen Really, really, really often that, like, a second one shows very quickly. Uh, best spot for Southeastern Spanish Ibex. Basically, so the whole premise of Cuatro Colinas is there's four different mountains on the map, and, unsurprisingly, one mountain for every species of Ibex, or subspecies of Ibex. The one in the southeast, obviously, is where all the Southeastern Spanish Ibex are. There are, I think, I think six lakes around that mountain. If you make it there drink time, which is, I forget Ibex drink time now, it's somewhere, it's either like 11 to 1400 or something like that. You make it there drink time, check out those lakes, you're gonna see a ton of Ibex. You somehow only have 25. It seems like you're moving quickly now though. Uh, do you like Call of the Wild or the Angler better? I prefer the Hunter Call of the Wild, but like, I prefer hunting and stuff in real life too. That's not to say I don't enjoy the angler or enjoy fishing, but hunting is kind of where my passion lies. I just want you guys to know Shadow's standing exactly in front of my screen, so I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> can't wait to wake up and see a great one bear video. Dude, I'm hoping. I really, I want to get these last three diamonds out of the way. Or at least, let's say at least two of them. If we can get, say, Rusadir and Bobcat, I still feel like Widgeons, and for most waterfowl, it's kind of bound to happen eventually in a multiplayer server or something, but the other two, I think we're going to just have to put some time in, and Widgeon as well, but again, it's a lot of times birds are such like an opportunity kill for us. The Fies have picked up for sure. Well, that's good, though. Really looking forward to not grinding for a while, yet, like, I enjoy grinding in this game generally. It's, it's rather fun, but... I am definitely not someone who can do that as my thing. Like, I really like to just wander around. When's the next Leighton Trophy Cabin vid coming? And I got trolled by a bobcat. Well, I really hope the next one makes it for you. They're, I've always said this, predator trolls are just the worst. Next episode of that, it could be this week. I think we're, oh, actually, I just thought of another video I gotta do. I think we're pretty well to the point that you know, Emerald Coast has been out for nearly a month. We've been hitting the map 
other than Teoro of Falahunt's pretty much every single time we do any content. And it's about time to start to stray back to some other other map, so I think this le this week I'd like to get back on Leighton. There's a video I need to do on Te Aoroa. There was an animal I saw while, I think I've even said it in a stream, so I won't bother trying to hide what it is. I have an albino female feral goat on my map, and I just didn't kill it because I think I only had the 308 at the time. So I want to go back, get that. Uh, I honestly don't know what else we're going to do in that video. Maybe we jump to Emerald Coast because there's kind of feral goats on both, but other than that, I think I'd like to do some Leighton Lake trophy cabin uh, hunts this week. When are Throwback Thursdays coming back? I don't know specifically if Throwback Thursday ever will, but something that I I want to do, and maybe now's the time to do it, is a sort of flashback Friday thing. So it would be in addition to the Friday streams. And essentially, it wouldn't be nearly every Friday. But I want to, you know, take a, an old game, more or less play through the entire thing, and then maybe make a 45 minute, one hour episode of sort of the highlights and stuff. I think that could be fun. I think that would be a good way to incorporate some old games without having like a eight week playthrough, <laughs> trying to get every mission and stuff in the video. So that'll be the plan. We'll see where we end up with that, but I think it could be fun. I'd, I'd like to try making those style of videos. It would be a very different type of content for me. I think we shot too low, by the way. And too far forward. What's up, Mr. Steelers fan? What's going on, dude? Speaking of football-related things, I was watching the quarterback series on Netflix. I just finished it this morning. If you guys haven't watched that and you're at all interested in NFL-related things, highly recommend. Cabela's Big Game Hunter? We've done two Big Game Hunters now? Oh, four and... Ooh. No, I'm thinking of, so, uh, Alaskan Adventures was called Big Game Hunter something on PC. So actually only one Big Game Hunter. Guns fault. <laughs> uh, came upon a legendary Puma, tracked it for 3.38 kilometers, finally got a spot to take a shot. Oh, ended up using the 300 to still score 39.39. That's hugely unfortunate. I do, I feel like that was more of an issue for me earlier on because the customization and stuff now skill issues thank you <laughs> what I try to do is customize my guns so they're visually distinguishable but it's still in the heat of the moment it's so easy to not notice that what yeah we did shoot too low under the heart under the lungs into the stomach just like I intended <laughs> favorite Pittsburgh quarterback of all time so here's the thing from the time that I started watching, basically, it was Roethlisberger's first year. I remember a little bit of Tommy Maddox, next to none. And I know off the field stuff, Roethlisberger has plenty of issues. But I think he kind of has to be my favorite because that's what I grew up watching. Personality-wise and everything, Terry Bradshaw is the man. But I just, I didn't get to grow up watching him, so it's a different kind of deal. Hey, Danny, thank you for the almost triple 12, by the way. Welcome back. How's things going? What should I do if I see five level twos in a drinking zone? Are we grinding? What's the what's the uh, situation here? Where are all of our roots here? Did I go the wrong way when Shadow was, like, in front of the screen? Let's loop around here. Because the thing is, I was going to hunt through drink time, but... If we go to Bobcat drink time, we're going to spend a lot of time hunting at night. I didn't want to do that. We know they bunch up in a couple of these spots to drink, but they got to be all spread out across these areas. Might blast a red deer just for the sake of getting something. I bet there's some trophy red deer of some kind on this map. We've shot like four. Bradshaw is great. He's one of the, one of the best all time, and I don't think he gets enough credit for how good he was. But, you know, I, I've maybe seen a couple of complete games from that era. <laughs> big Ben, more like Big Booper. <laughs> if he was called that, he would have been a better off the field man. Is it thundering? I hear something. 
Going good, just playing some EC, waiting for Amazon to deliver new wristling and replacement arrows because I nailed one of the knock. Great work. That is a good, very good problem to have when you start destroying arrows with your other arrows. I, I don't think, even think I told you. Um, I literally got confirmation today that Darton is sending me a Veracity for this year, which is the bow that I shot at the ATA show and was super excited about. So I don't know when that's going to get here. I'm going to try to do an unboxing video and hopefully shoot it as much as I can in some off-season content. I'm so excited though. That thing shoots like a dream, at least based on the one I shot at the ATA show. And, you know, confidence is everything with archery hunting. And a bow that, like, I've literally shot a couple of times and I felt so good about, I really feel like mentally I'll be in a good spot this season for, for archery. Clutch indeed. Bradshaw was a good QB. I'm a Raven fan, but I can admit Bradshaw was one of the greats. It probably helps too that like I'll back up a second to explain my perception. One of the reasons I didn't like Flacco is he had a tendency to kill the Steelers with like 10 seconds left. He threw a couple of game winning touchdown passes like basically at the buzzer. But I guess Bradshaw never really because he didn't play the Ravens at any stage. There's maybe less like heartbreak involved with the Bradshaw memories. Now if you're Someone that was a Browns fan, who then became the Ravens, that might be a different story. They were good at that time too, though. Got a great one fallow after 2,095 kills. This is my 15th great one. That is insane, dude. Flint, flint knock wood? I don't get the flint knock part. Is that a thing? Recording a black hunt this fall, tips, tricks, and preferred cameras. I'm assuming you're going to be hunting out of a tree stand? It would be really tough, I think, to film a bear hunt from the ground. Unless you're, like, spot and stock. I, it totally depends on the type of hunting you're doing. I have a Sony FDR AX700. It's about a $1,500 to $2,000 camera, depending on... I think the European version's a little bit cheaper, but it shoots in 50 FPS instead of 60 FPS, because that's the standard frame rates they use over there. But, um, I love that camera. It's, I feel like it has the capability of delivering professional quality for, you know, a reasonable price. $2,000 is expensive for a camera, but if it's something you really want to get into, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, Danny, thank you for the super chat, by the way. How do you do a magpie setup? I can't get him close. Let me show you something. Because we're not having much luck with the deers at the moment anyway. So I've got two magpie setups, and what's really key is to fast travel into them. The reason is, they only exist where crocodiles live, and that's a problem because as the magpies go to land, they'll spook. If you're fast traveling into your setup, remember nothing spawns within a 200 meter circle of where you fast travel to. So you're pretty safe that crocs aren't going to be there to spook your geese. Now, you do have to consider they're perfectly capable of moving around. Maybe like when zones end, crocs that are way out here that we can't see are gonna move into this area. If that's happening, I would just grab your shotgun, fire into the air a couple times, good to go. Now we spooked our geese, but I didn't really intend on shooting them, so it's gonna be all good. Make sure nothing special was coming in. I don't think that's the case. And you can see I managed to at least alert a croc that's fairly far away, maybe even spooked him. There he is. But yeah, that's basically how I, would, how I would approach it. Fast travel, shoot when there's no geese coming in. You should be good to go. Let's try, like, over here. I know there's roosted deer all over this area. What's up, Lunar? Are days in Way the Hunter equal to years? No. Um. So there's some dispute about exactly how much real time is required. But let's set aside the real time portion of it for a second. Three... In-game days in Way the Hunter equal one Way the Hunter a year. Now the real-time aspect, I think you have to play for maybe a half hour or 45 minutes, let's say per in-game day. So for the sake of easy math, let's say that it's a half hour. You would need to spend about an hour and a half playing and rest three times in that sequence to be able to pass one in-game year. You can't just simply rest three times and get the year to pass. Now, 
Multiplayer is different. If you're playing multiplayer, you can spam rest and pass time. And I think maybe the devs know this, but I'm probably going to pass that information along to them because that is a real problem for exploits. But if you're playing multiplayer and you're trying to pass time at the moment, you can spam rest and do it. What's up, Billy? I uh, thought they would add Dinko instead of Red Fox to EC, but can't complain. I wouldn't have minded it. I think it would have been cool. I find that, like most maps, I generally don't bother with nighttime drink zones and stuff. I just, if it's a predator species or whatever, I'll hope to get their tracks in the daylight and sort of hope for an opportunity to kill, speaking of Red Fox, uh, at a diamond. But because Rusa Deer drink at night and Sandbar drink close to night, I do find myself hunting on Emerald Coast fairly late quite a bit. And if the Redingo is here, I think I'd be hunting them too. Have you got any good magpie trophies? I need to hunt them more. Really want a Mel to go with the Melacroc. I hope to find one day. Um, I just have the diamond and then like a silver leucistic. There is a, I forget where it was. There's a small magpie, what? A small piebald magpie on my map, but I don't even know why I didn't shoot it. I think I just saw it when I was croc hunting and figured I'd go back. I want to say it's up here, but I'm not too worried about it. I think it was level two. Thanks for the tip all the way from South Africa. My pleasure, man. Lurkin. He's going to hear what I say about him. Just got my first time in croc along with a light brown. Nice, dude. I still don't have any rare crocs. I haven't spent that much time after them. But they... I think all of them look so, so good. Light brown's one of my favorites, though. My son Hunter says hi and wanted me to tell you about his Albino K Buffalo. That's awesome, man. They are, I feel like, any really big animal, be it K Buffalo, uh, Moose, Water Buffalo, they're a little bit different because they're kind of a pinkish color. Any of those monster animals that are albino are so, so cool. So assuming he's there, congrats, man. Uh, I was playing Tay Hour Roll Multiplayer and got a Piebald Mallard. Nice. Oh, that's the worst spicy goldfish on one that makes diamonds so rarely. Sometimes the game's just cruel. I think that's all it is. What's up, Ultra? I'm brand new. You seem nice. Why, thank you. I only hunt crocs when they annoy me during the Bantan grind. You know, it's unhealthy to shoot things because they anger you. Speaking of angering me, we have not found a single Rusa so far. Before I started the stream, a Rusa deer doe just ran right to where I was starting the hunt. I thought we were in good shape. Nonsense. Maybe we'll make it through drink time just briefly. I'm trying to remember. There was another spot I found in multiplayer that, that kind of seemed to be a hot spot. It wasn't here. It wasn't here. I think it might have been here, but I'm almost sure I went there in single player already. I'm almost sure one of these other lakes has them, but I can't can't quite remember where it was. Just killed me a diamond kangaroo, the scoring 530. That's max score, dude. Very solid. Definitely shooting fallow out of anchor at this point. I was probably close to that. That's fair enough. I get that. That might be... See, that's one of those things. If, if you end up... If it's something you intend to not give up on, it's probably healthier to shoot them out of anger. Uh, how do I stop only finding animals on the outside of the hill I'm climbing? I mean, I guess you could try to, like, walk or crouch walk up over. I typically just accept that I'm going to spook stuff. Call the Wild generally, like, it's pretty okay to spook an animal. Tracking's pretty easy. If it comes to it and you can't track them down, typically, there we go. <laughs> Level 5 rooster right there, first one of the hunt. And he's stuck. I don't think he's a diamond. You gonna stay there? I'm too afraid to shoot just in case. I'm pretty sure that's the 130s rack, but let's not do anything stupid. Anyway, let's say, for instance, we've just spooked this level 5 Rusa. I mentioned spooking things is generally okay. If it came to it and we couldn't find him, we can probably find a zone of his, set the time to that zone time, and end up getting him that way. I know we can make that shot. really helps when they just pause, but 
I still think if that was the obvious big rack, I wouldn't have even done that. Fingers crossed, it'd be amazing if he makes it, because that would really set us off on the right foot for this hunt, but I definitely expect a troll. I'm gonna shoot that level three as well. Get all the respawns. I've done a whole bunch of multiplayer hunting for these guys, and I just don't know what would be better. Like, should we just single player grind? I'm kind of starting to lean towards that, especially again with the fallow grind over. We have some time for it. It might be more efficient. Is this the real Flinter? I'm just a fan account. Do I sound like him though? I think I do pretty good. <laughs> Kyla's over there shaking her head. <laughs> what gun? This is the 7mm bolt action from the Hunter Power Pack. Alright, moment of truth. I don't know, the rack does look a little different. 144, he is a slightly bigger one than I thought. Maybe short beams? Still one of our better ones, and he's actually kind of a low weight, like not even 169 kilo? Getting there, slowly but surely. So we've now killed, since release, two fives in single player, and I don't even know, five, six, seven level fives in multiplayer, a bunch. All trolls. Okay, so why don't we... Eh, we might as well continue with this. Since we killed a five, we'll stick with their... Whatever, feed time, rest time, whatever they're doing right now. And... Maybe give it... 20, 30 more minutes and we'll jump to New England. Did you see Tim Wells' Red Stag video? Is it recent? Uh, I hope this isn't too much to ask, but can you please show me some hotspots for Rusadir for drink and or... Uh, resting in feed zones. So I don't know the rest and feed zones as far as hotspot goes, hot spots go like at all. Drink zone hotspots though, this lake that we're literally right beside right now up here like by the Opal Point text, it's sort of like the northwest area of the Ruby Coast. So it's really good. This little lake down here on the far west side of the map is quite good. I would say like the river, pretty much, I would go with like from this outpost, this Buckley's Respite, Go from here north, lots of roosts up in there. Some maps, this place is loaded, and then this river as well. I know that probably sounds like a lot, but that's literally like the only places roosted deer drink for the most part. You're gonna find the vast majority of the roosted deer on your map just by visiting those spots. Why don't we just track this down? We gotta get all the respawns we can anyway. Just now, where was he? Maybe running when we shot the others? You gotta speak new English if you want to go to New England. Is the handgun scope worth buying? I think it is, because guns like the 454, the 243 pistol, uh, even the 44, all have really great utility in the game. And actually, you don't need the pistol scope for the 243, but even just having the 454, there are certain loadouts where you need a class 9 weapon, but maybe long shots and stuff like that aren't that likely. Parquet Fernando, for instance. A lot of times you may just want something that's ethical to shoot a charging water buffalo should a albino or a level 9 or something charge you, and maybe you don't want the long range capability, but having a scope can really be nice. Beware of the Euro bunnies, as long as they're not the uh, murder bunnies from the Halloween event in Classic, I think we'll be okay. What do you hunt in New England? Uh, bobcats. I don't necessarily want to do that, but they're one of the diamonds we're missing. We've been semi-seriously hunting them for a little bit now. We, I want to say we did one or two streams before Emerald Coast, at least one video, and I've done five or six runs kind of off camera, just killing as many bobcats in a particular area as I can. So eventually I'm sure level nine is going to show up. There, I don't perceive bobcat diamonds to be that rare. It's just a matter of right place, right time kind of deal. Murder bunnies were crazy. They were they were one of my favorites, but at the same time, they were kind of terrifying. I know he just fled. Or a rooster deer just fled. It either went right through the trees. Or like, I don't know, straight up disappeared. I don't even think this is the same one. I love the blues now that they're rare. It's kind of a shame, it's, you know, like many other rares that were at one time not rare, 
I wish they've always been rare because I've got a bunch of blue uh, Mexican Bobcats from Rancho. And it makes me, I think, less motivated to really go and just try to get, you know, a blue Bobcat. But it would be nice if on our little mini Bobcat grind one would show up. It's like, what happened here? Our deer just disappeared? I guess we'll just follow this track, maybe. Oh. I really don't know what's going on. We'll, we'll find him. What's up, Bree? Thank you for the two months. Welcome back. Very much appreciate the membership. The murder money laugh was terrifying, not knowing where they were. Yeah, and they were like, they were so fast. They were so little, and you only had silver slugs. Like, there wasn't buckshot or birdshot. To save you a little bit on, you know, exactly where you aim, you had to be dead on a very tiny, fast-moving thing, or you were dead. He bounces away with the ruse. If he's a five, I'll I'll bounce away with him if, if we have to. Are you ever gonna get back to the bear grind? I intend to. More ruse, I guess. My, like my ultimate hope for the rest of the summer, because we've achieved the fallow deer, great one kind of earlier, I wouldn't say earlier than I expected, but earlier than I sort of planned for because I, I basically planned for it to go poorly. What I'd like to have happen is go back to the moose grind. Maybe if we can get super lucky, get the Great One Moose before, I don't know, end of August? And then get back to bears for however long that takes. The problem is, Middle of September, I'm heading to Kentucky for an archery hunt, and that's pretty much going to kick off our hunting season for 2023. Once that happens, it'll pretty much be all systems go till, I don't know, middle of January next year. Everything just happens so fast once archery starts, and there's not going to be nearly as much grind time. So as much as possible needs to happen now, I just don't want to get burnt out on it, so that's, you know, why we're not currently shooting moose. What is this game? This is the Hunter Call of the Wild. Like Diamond Axis Deer? Exactly. Like literally the exact same premise. Diamond Black Buck as well. They were everywhere for forever. I love Diamond Black Buck now. They're one of my favorite things. I have done a lot of Black Buck hunting like streams and videos and stuff, and they just don't get much attention, and I assume it's because kind of that luster is lost. Hello. What you doing? Confused on one of you. <gasps> Did it punch upwards at us? I think we should be allowed to punch. How's the hunt going? Uh, well, we're imitating a kangaroo, so... That might not be the best sign, but we have killed a level 5 Rusa deer already. It was, what, a 144 troll, but that was kind of to be expected. It didn't look like a diamond to me. The money grind in this game is so tedious when you need so much money to set up hides and tents. Yeah, I think I kind of lucked out in that aspect. Because there wasn't nearly as much necessity for stuff like that when I first got started. So, you know, a lot of that money sort of just built up at the beginning. But... If you're starting to do, like, you know, any sort of Great One grind or something, I believe we had worked it out. For all the tents and tripods you typically would want, it's like 360-something thousand. It's the crocodiles. There are, yes. We, um, we're probably just south of where we'd expect to run into them. Where's Kyla? She's hiding. I think she's working on a video project that I don't think she wants to say what it is. Surprise kind of idea. It's not like surprise got another great one idea. It's like a fun little thing. Let's see. Let's try down here because I'm pretty sure Rusa deer rest or feed right outside this outpost. Be careful running along the water. So I think there's kind of two different animations for the croc attacks. One doesn't do that much damage. There is one, though, where they kind of 
charge out of the water that does seem to damage you more. What's your favorite looking map and what's your favorite map to hunt on? My favorite looking map, it's sad to say, is probably New England, which is my least favorite map to hunt on. My favorite map to hunt on? I think it's Leighton Lakes. The only reason I'm not, like my favorite map in general was Leighton Lakes. I'm kind of reading favorite map to hunt on, you know, including things like what species I'm hunting and what the terrain looks like and everything. I think I'd still go Leighton, but there are maps, you know, maybe like Verhunga that's super open. You're just going to see a lot of animals, probably going to end up, if you take enough time there, find some trophies and stuff. It's I really enjoy Verhunga, but overall I think I got to go Leighton. Do tents reset when you change maps? No, there is, I don't even want to call it a bug, there's, there's like a sort of a mechanic for when the game's having a hard time loading the terrain where you've placed the tent that will make your tents how we what are you hitting the foot i guess it'll make your tents return to your inventory so you may have to reset them up but it doesn't like necessarily reset everything if we weren't chasing a fox i'd shoot that two star albino whitetail nice dude a dollar mature why don't you like new england I think it's because there's nothing to draw me there species-wise. Like, I don't necessarily mind how the map's laid out. It's just... If I want to hunt whitetail or moose, I'll go to, like, Reventuli Coast. Like, if I want to efficiently hunt and get a lot of those things. If I want to hunt black bears, I'll go to Stillbridge Peaks. If I want to hunt... What? Pheasants? I'll go to Rancho. Raccoons? Maybe New England's better, but I might want to go to Mississippi instead. And that just kind of continues on basically every species on the map. I don't think New England is the best map to hunt for really anything. Which sucks. Like, I wish it was. Mature? Gotcha. All my tents returned to my inventory when I left Australia and came back? That sounds more like a bug. Just dropped in anything good? Uh, we did shoot a troll rooster deer already. Right through the toes. Poor dude's gonna not be able to make a living anymore. Please help me, I want to buy a new map, and I don't know which one. So one thing I always recommend to everybody is you can play any map, even if you don't own it, in multiplayer. So I would just go to multiplayer, pick a random map if you want, play it, see if you like it, and maybe even just move on to the next one without making a decision as to purchasing one. Once you've played through a bunch or just really fell in love with a map, then I would look into buying that one. Sounds good, K99. Uh, just want a white diamond fallow and this one troll? Of course. The fallow deer trolls are, are pretty rough. It always feels like that's the way it goes, though. Like, you get the fur you want and everything, and then it trolls. Hopefully the next one makes it. I don't find that they're too uncommon. Like, I, I think you should get a, a crack at one that makes it, but are you grinding for a great one, or was that, like, a random encounter? Ah, just hit the hill. I think we'd have brain shot him, but I still wanted to get it. What's better for Gray Fox, Mississippi, or New England? Um, now, New England might be better there because, ah, you'd run into Bobcats, though. I was going to say the Gator spook him on Mississippi. The Bobcat spook him on New England? I've never killed a trophy Gray Fox of any kind on New England. It is a good fox map. I'll give it that. I... Emerald Coast is already a better Red Fox map. But for Gray Fox, maybe, yeah, I could give that to New England. There we go. A little max weight stubble quail track. I want to buy Savannah or Emerald Coast, but I don't know which one. That's a tough question. If I had to pick between the two, I'm... See, it's so, like, down to personal preference on the species and stuff, but I might actually go for Hunga. One thing to keep in mind, because Emerald Coast is the newest map, there will be a ton of multiplayer servers open for quite some time, and, you know, if you feel like hunting Emerald Coast, you can do it in multiplayer. Now, Verhunga typically does have a bunch of multiplayer servers too, though I've seen that dwindling over the last year or so, but something to maybe consider.
you could sort of get the best of both worlds by buying Brahunga and then just going back to multiplayer for Emerald Coast. I don't really know where that quail track's going, but that's okay. What's up, Andrew? Hunt's going alright so far. We killed a Troll Roosadier, which is to be expected. Gonna give it another probably 10 minutes here, running around, see if we can get anything else. Primarily looking for Rusa, then we're gonna go to New England. And then we'll see from there. I don't know if we're gonna hunt Widgeon today or not. I'd like to. It's just, you know, only so many things you can hunt in one day. Even though the 243 is more powerful, I really like the 22 250. The follow up shots are lightning fast. That and the range on it, which I know they zero to the same ranges, but the big advantage of the 22 250 is when you zero for 300, you're accurate at 300. Versus with the 243, when you zero for 300, you're accurate at about 250. Why? I don't know. Why they haven't changed that? I also don't know. Okay, surely they're gonna be... Oh, I see one of them. I'm thinking this is that flock with the decent one. Oh my lord, how are we gonna... More than I thought it could be that one? I'm looking typically for estimates like in the 220s with that weight. So 213... I guess it's maybe the one up to whatever that was, 215, wherever he was. Good news is they can barely fly faster than you can run, so it's not terribly difficult to keep up with them. Did that miss? Did any of those hit? I felt like the last one should have. I tried to kind of shoot without slowing down so we could keep up with them more, but... now nah, he's still going. I still don't know if we got them. Do males make diamond for stubble quail? Yes. Stubborn quail? <laughs> Not a typo. They are kind of stubborn. Top tier thumbnail? Why, thank you. Not top tier shooting, I guess. That's right. So funny, I forgot to laugh. Oof. Best map for Fallow? I would say Te Aoroa, and it's not particularly close. Hospital for Kangaroo? Hospital? So wait, those were other stubble quail that fled to our right? Oh, there's the one. That would be the one with the, the high weight estimate. Do I not have birdshot loaded? Is that what's happening right now? No, I do. I'm very perplexed as to how we're not hitting things. Where's he at? He's gonna die whether he likes it or not. I'll use a 22 if I have to. Uh, I don't know where he went. He's up to 240 something. The crazy part is, it took us three attempts at spotting him to even find him? Well, guess we'll follow him. Throw a rock at them? Probably be more effective. Okay, they're gonna land. Give us a chance to... Oh, no, they're not gonna land. Would have given us the chance to make up some ground. He must be one of these ones that's out away from the rest of the flock. How is it this challenging? I feel like we're spotting everything. Sir, where are you? Oh, holy. Okay, there he is. That's still shotgun range. Let's launch a couple here. <laughs> Simple as that. As soon as we get him out of the trees, killed him. Maybe it was just the tree branches? I don't know. Try to put on the bow sling and the stabilizer bolt is so old that it snapped from just light pressure? Oh, jeez. I mean, probably better now than in season, though. Not too bad. Still well shy of diamond, but take a decent little fella at 64 meters after missing him 27 times. Uh, first week of working out my... And, and everything hurts. Should be like this. Um, well, meets is working, right? 
Hello? Whole group of everything in here. What's diamond for Stubble Quill? Uh, 238, obviously, they gotta be level 3. Well, you can get level 2 diamonds, but if you're looking for level 3s. Where were you? I guess we'll follow that too. We'll try to kill that and then go to New England. Gonna do some archery hunting in PA this season? Indeed. I just got a confirmation today that I'll be shooting a dart in veracity this year. It's... So this bow is... If you're someone who shoots competition and, like, archery hunts, it's supposed to be a sort of a... What would you call it? A, a one... A do-it-all bow? For, for hunting and target shooting. It's a longer axle to axle, about 35 inches, which for 2023 is longer than most hunting bows. A lot of hunting bows you're looking at 32, 33 inches, even shorter in some cases. So it's a little more stable. And in 2020, I shot an obsession that had a 34 inch axle to axle, and it's it remains the bow that I can shoot the best. I shot the Veracity at the ATA show in Indianapolis back in January, and I loved it. So I'm really excited to get to use it this year. Just failed a level nine red fox diamond. They're so they're so small though, man. It's so easy to happen. A little move here or there, just off by the tiniest bit. It's not a big target to aim for. Yesterday I got on a hack parquet server. Everything was super rare. Great one. Yeah, that's the one thing about multiplayer. Because the biggest problem is, when you first join that server and you find something crazy, your first reaction isn't always to think, oh, this is obviously hacked. It can be such a letdown when you realize. Troll Co strikes again, that's just what it does. Killed a diamond pink feral pig, that's pretty cool. Haven't seen too many of those posted. Screwed up a diamond jackal ages ago, their lungs are just so hard to hit. They are. I mean, I remember right when Verhunga came out, I ended up killing a Diamond Jackal that was a level 5. And back then, quick kill and stuff was relevant, and I almost whiffed the shot just trying to get that perfect heart shot. It's a little target to aim for. I missed, I missed the heart and hit a lung, I think. What's up, ZBG? Doing good, man. Just, just getting trolled out here on Emerald Trollsta as we do. Roosadier and... Level 5s doesn't mean much. Are female piebald mallard rare? I think the only like true rare mallards are melanistic and leucistic. Is that correct? I don't even know for sure that melanistic is. Leucistic definitely is pretty rare though in my experience. How do you have so much storage and not have to worry about noise level? I'm not carrying a backpack or anything. I've just got like the normal 20 units. I'm carrying pretty light weapons. So like, the 16 gauge I think is in the area of 3 units, the 7 mil I think is 3.5, the 243 handgun is like 1, and the 22 I think is 1 or 2 units. So it's mostly just lightweight guns, and I don't carry much equipment, like I've maybe got binoculars and medkits, I think that's it. Oh, blonde females, I forgot about them. The Jackal was level 5? Yes. Uh, I may have the only level 5 Diamond Jackal ever. I've never seen another one posted. So, for like a couple days, right after Verhunga came out, both Jackal and Cape Buffalo were level 5 Diamonds. I don't know why. Like, Cape Buffalo, sure, I've never minded. Like, I never thought that was weird. But Jackal, at that stage, we already had foxes, and pumas, and coyotes, and black bears. I'm missing any predators, I don't think so. All those maxed at level 9. So it was really odd, like, for this new predator to max at 5. It was like, whatever, okay. There was confusion about max levels on Burhunga anyway. Because Kudu were making diamond at level 4 all the time. Um, like, half the level 4 Kudu made diamond. Let alone, like, level 5s obviously made it. A lot of us thought level 4 was just the max level for Kudus, and it was going to be a different game where, like, you know, things could max at 4 or 6 or whatever. That's That was at least my thinking. So when Jack of War 5 is just like, okay, I guess they're changing how levels work. 
and then two days later, something like that, they changed it. You didn't have Pumas? What am I thinking of? Medved. Lynx, sorry. I got my DLC map order backwards. A red Warthog rare? Yes, red brown or not, red R. Took me a sec. Uh, what do you prefer, Way the Hunter or Call of the Wild? I know this probably isn't the answer you're looking for, but it very much depends on the day. Like, for instance, a lot of times in real life hunting season, I'll prefer Call of the Wild pretty much every single time because I most likely I've just spent, you know, anywhere from three to 12 hours hunting. And assuming I haven't shot anything, I'm not really after a challenge in that moment, like way the 100%s, I probably just want to go out and shoot some stuff in a hunting game. Call of the Wild is by far the best for that. But in the off season, you know, say like February, March, when you start to kind of miss it again, that's when I'm really into Way the Hunter. And I, I enjoy Way the Hunter at any time, like obviously I just did a video on it yesterday, but it's, it so much depends on like, even down to the day what I'm specifically looking for. Like, do I have four, five, six hours to really challenge myself and hunt? Cool, I'm playing Way the Hunter. Do I have two hours and I just want to try to get something good? Call the Wild every time. She's got an albino boar, nice. I love them, they're, they're underrated. Shot a gold red warthog. Uh, that would have been a red brown. The, at least as far as I know, red warthog can only be female. So if you see one that looks like Pumbaa, like literally red skin color, I guess, those are the, the rares. The reddish, like, mane, I don't know if mane's the right word, but still the common, like, black or gray, that's uh, uncommon. I think I might have just finally saw that, Rusa. Yeah, there he is. Same one we've been chasing. Got a couple of does coming up out of there. I think it might be safe to finally go to New England. Not that I want to do that, but we're gonna. Uh, have I missed anything? Nothing to speak of. We had a troll roost deer, but you know, those are a dime a dozen. He wasn't 144, like he wasn't bad. Still well shy of the 148 mark though. So we're gonna go to New England. Uh, not like that. <laughs> we're gonna try to shoot some bobcats and we'll see where that gets us i did do a bobcat run earlier today so maybe that's a good thing i already forget what time they drink though it's three to six or three to seven do you hunt in real life i absolutely do there are i don't even know the number 50 or 60 real life hunting videos on this channel i've been filming my hunts since 2019 some of the early stuff is maybe not necessarily the best quality but I'd like to think it's improved. Are gray pumas and mountain lions common in real life? That's a good question. I do not know. All right, let me look. Firstly, what is that? Kawasuck? That's a nice name. Three to six, okay. So let's start down in here. Cause I've been just doing this chunk and there's not as many bobcats as there used to be. What's up, Joe? Took me seven trolls to get a diamond rusa. I'm on nine or ten now, but that seems pretty common. Like five, six, seven trolls. It seems like most people just get trolled that much. I saw, I don't know if it was in chat, Discord, comments. I, I really forget where it was. But I saw somebody say like their third rusa ever was a diamond. That's up there with like initial spawn great one kind of luck. Time flies in D-Dude. This is going to be my fifth year of uh, filming my real life hunts, which is pretty cool. It, you know, it reaches a point where there's a lot of, like, almost a catalog of hunts to, to look back on. Now, some of those older hunts I maybe, you know, would cringe at the entire time if I watched it, but it's cool. Like, especially in the off-season... And, and probably in season two when I'm trying to like, you know, recapture that 
motivation to wake up for the 12th day in a row at 6 a.m. and go sit in the cold for 12 hours. It just reliving some of those moments just through watching the videos is quite fun. What's really weird though is my memories of the hunts become only what's captured on film. Like I have next to no recollection of putting the crosshairs on my 180 before I shot it and I had them in my scope for minutes. I only remember what's on camera. The buck that I shot in West Virginia with my bow last year I really can't remember looking through the sights at him at all. It's just what's on camera, which I guess maybe that's motivation for me to, you know, continue to try to make sure I get my shots on camera because I really, it's crazy when I look back. Maybe it's the focus on trying to film and stuff, but I, anything that's not on film, I basically forget. Uh, Rissa Deer drink time, Brennan, is 20 hundred hours to midnight, I think. Yeah, what Brady said. The best mule deer spots on what time? It depends on the map. Um, I think Rancho could be considered the best mule deer map. Silver Ridge Peaks is pretty good as well. And honestly, Parquet is quite solid. But I want to say they drink from... They either start at 1400 and end at 17 or start at 15 and end at 18. One of those two. Really, any body of water on any of those maps during those times could have mule deer. They're pretty all over the place for all the maps. That scared me. Have you ever shot a diamond albino turkey? Um, no. I've had several diamond light browns, never a diamond albino. So what we started doing with bobcats is just using whatever big weapon we have. If they're standing still, that's one thing, but on the run, we're not tracking them. Uh, can you rank maps from least favorite to most favorite? There's probably too many maps for me to do that very, like, seriously. Like, I could do it, but everything between, say, number 2 and 10 probably won't be my actual ranking. Like, I, I would just have to sit down and write them all down. Parquet's not a red from Mule Deer. I killed two diamond Mule Deer at the same lake on Parquet. I remember it was maybe when they got their true axe. A lot of people were hunting for diamonds, and I was always recommended Parquet, but everybody wanted to do SRP. Parquet's drink time was so much better back then. Now everything's linked up, so it really does become like, you know, what map has the best hotspots, not what map has the best drink time. Light brown turkeys are rare? No, they're very much common. I probably shouldn't have said, it just, they look similar to albino is why I said that. If I called them rare, I was distracted. I don't think I did. Hopefully, even my distracted brain knows those things are sadly common. Smoked. Parquet is still one of your top three favorite maps? It was in my top three for a long time. Like, if I were going to try to rank these quick, I'd go Leighton 1, Verhunga 2, Emerald Coast 3, probably SRP 4, Parquet 5, uh, see, Revan Tulis needs to be ahead of that. That's why I said I need to write them all down. Revan Tulis is ahead of that for me. Revan Tulis is like 3 for me. Like I said, it wouldn't be a meaningful ranking. <laughs> they used to be rare, they used to be uncommon, I would say. Rare turkeys were never properly rare. At least, like, uh, light browns were never very rare. Even leucistic albino mela were over spawning, and they fixed that to make them rare, but light browns are still pretty pretty common. Starting thing, piebald fowler were common, had five the day, 6,200 kills into my grind, and still no great one. Man, I hope it shows up soon. I went to 6,140, and I know it's no fun, so hopefully it's just around the corner. The five piebald thing, I'm pretty sure I had five in one stream one time, and it was three or four hours long, it's, for me, they come in waves. Like, I'll get a day where I'm killing a piebald every run, every other run, and then I'll go 800 kills, no rares. It's, it's really, really odd. Are leucistic turkeys rare? Yes. 
watching from Montana, been watching since you had 49,000 followers, love the content. Well, thank you, man. And thank you for sticking around this long. Uh, Toaster, thank you for the super chat. Why don't you use herd management? So, for me, it became about, like, because at first, like, I'll tell you my personal feelings. I felt that it was probably an exploit to play that way. But then, EW has made it clear, like, in their eyes, it's not an exploit. And actually, to some degree, it was sort of intended, I guess. So then it, it was just more, like, a line that I didn't want to cross. In terms of, you know, if I'm doing herd management, am I also, you know, doing anything else that's maybe sketchy? But the problem is... With that line of thinking, herd management, like, again, in NEW's eyes and stuff is, a, you know, like, how do you want to say it, a higher level type of play or whatever? I think that was Jaxie's words. So probably I'm just an old curmudgeonly male that hasn't come around to the times yet. <laughs> uh, your guy, thank you for the super chat as well. Got my first... Limited Quota Mule Deer Hunt tag this year. Which, uh, what state's that? Can you hunt something and kill it with an airsoft gun? Like, legally? I doubt it. There's generally some form of regulations for everything. I always imagine, like, just being a great one moose on my New England for no good reason. Probably wouldn't happen. Wyoming, gotcha. That's a state where I am intending on eventually applying for Mule Deer. Probably not for a couple more years yet, but I think that'd be pretty cool. Extra long stream today? Uh, we'll see. Probably not, but you never know. <laughs> this new generation and their gosh darn herd management. Boy, I tell you. Back in my day, you shot the level ones, you shot the level twos. You have an IRL trophy lodge. I mean, above my computer, kind of. I have two European mounts and three skull plate mounts, and then to my left, I've got two more European mounts, though one is fake. One is a Mountain Mike's reproduction skull. The antlers are real, but the... It was, it was like a skull plate mount that we then attach the antlers to the reproduction thing. And then, because the reproduction skull was n notably, like, at least when hung next to real skulls, notably fake, my brother Hydro dipped it in a red, white, and blue color, which I quite like. At some stage, I'm gonna hang my red, white, and blue bow near it. It's just, I can't do that here because there's not enough room in this room, as is for all the deer that are on the wall. Downstairs is where my big male is. Uh, any roost of luck? We killed the level 5 troll and that was it, so now we're chasing bobcats. Is the Zarza 10308 usable as the 7 mil? Can't really handle the big recoil. Uh, it will, for the most part, do just as well with everything other than class 9 animals. Obviously, the 308 being at 4 classes, 4 2 A's, you can't shoot, say, a cape buffalo or lion. Otherwise, 100%. Just got my first IRL Reeker bow, playing to hunt some Florida whitetail. That'd be cool, man. I still, last September, my sister and her fiance got me a Reeker bow for my birthday. And I still haven't shot it. Like, I have it. I have a, I had to get a stringer tool because I just couldn't, couldn't string it up. I'd get it close and I'd get like the string on the limbs and it just wouldn't, I don't know. I, I don't know what I was doing wrong exactly, but it wasn't working. So. I got that, and I just still haven't, haven't shot it. What a whiff that was, jeez. Are we gonna get an IRL Trophy Lodge tour? Somebody asked me about doing a deer tour recently, and what I thought about doing was like, picking up Shadow, holding her, and then like grabbing her paws and pointing at the different deer and like telling it from her perspective. Which would only be like two of them and the rest would just be like, I wasn't even born yet. 
But at the moment, she's shedding so bad. Like, I picked her up earlier to get her off my desk because she was standing literally in front of my screen. And it probably for 30 minutes, I was trying to get like microscopic hairs off of me. Like I could just, it, it's almost like when a bug's crawling on you, you can just feel it. Got my first rare piebald fallow female. Nice. I don't know if you know this. That is one of the newest rares added to the game, which is probably going to sound stupid. But for a long time, it was actually not possible for female fallow to spawn as piebald. You could get male piebald fallows just fine. But fallow does for like six years there never could be piebald. Do the, the, the buckumentary bottom boy? I still need to, like, I need to look that up. Someone out there has come up with that. There's no way I came, like, I did come up with it. There's no way I'm the only one that did. Let me search it. Buckumentary. Actually. What if I search it on YouTube? Did I come up with it? Trademarking it if I did. I actually don't see anything coming up when I type in Buckumentary. I feel like someone out there has done that. There's no way. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. From Giannis Putellas? I feel like he'd be more likely to do some kind of other umentary. He doesn't do, like, he's mostly like moose and caribou and stuff, isn't he? What's up, Bryce? Dream animal hunt in real life? Speaking of caribou, it would be an Alaskan caribou hunt. Ideally with a bow, but I'm not picky. I'll use a gun. When it comes to, like, hunt of a lifetime or anything like that, I would probably prefer to be successful in the end, so gun probably gives me far better odds. Thanks for talking about park earlier. I went there because of that and got an albino buffalo. Nice, man. What fur types are rare for Rusa? They have albino, leucistic and piebald. I don't think they have melanistic, not that I've seen. Best gun to shoot buffalo with on the Africa map? If you have the 300 canning magnum from the Yukon Valley DLC, that's gonna be your best bet. If you don't have that, you can go with the 338 or the 7 mil, the base game guns, those will do just fine. It's just gonna maybe take a little longer to take them down or, you know, because they're single shot, maybe you won't have a, a quick follow up. But otherwise, it'll get him. What's up, Devin? How's it going, man? Checking in while doing some money on Classic. I was doing that earlier. I did not kill a 400 elk. What did I miss? Uh, so far, we spent close to an hour hunting for Rusa Deer, killed a level 5 troll. Now we're chasing bobcats, and I think we've killed, like, one level 7 that was halfway decent. The guy who took the world record grizzly with a bow while standing on the ground from under 10 meters gave me PTSD just watching it. What was the guy's name? It's, uh... Roy something. He was a good friend of Cameron Haynes. And he actually died while doll sheep hunting. He, like, fell off a rock face or something. But he did a bunch of, like, close-up grizzly hunting with a bow and it kind of made me want to do it and kind of made me terrified to do it got my first time in turkey tonight nice man roy roth was it that didn't seem right to me but it's been a while since i've watched that was that tim wells oh wait didn't tim wells smoke a bear in the face with his bow I'm not aware of him shooting one in the face i know he's speared I think a grizzly, like a pretty good size one. He likes Steve Ranello, a meat eater, of course. One of, if not the only, like, hunting show that I watch every episode of. It is Roy Roth, okay. See, Roy Williams was the one, the thing that was in my head, but he was a, what, cowboy and lion receiver, I think? Tim Wells smoked everything in the face? I thought he generally was like a down through the back into the vitals with his spear kind of thing. If troll is the term for a top level that doesn't make diamond, what do we call top level one that does? 
Like, other than diamond? Am I missing something? Oh, top level mine is one that does. I understand. Like, uh... We need a, like, a singular term for... Unexpected but welcome surprise. Got trolled twice as week by a level 5 bison. And then a level 5 caribou tonight. So sad right now and currently crying while I watch your stream. Uh, well, what I will say is the caribou will troll quite often. So that one's not so bad. The bison is pretty unfortunate. They don't tend to troll very much. Overachiever, there you go. Been watching the vid since before the restarting level 1 challenge. Big fan, well thank you, man. Appreciate you sticking around that long. That was quite some time ago now. It's funny to look back at it. Like, I had some intention of making that a guide, but... Every couple of years, typically we do another one, because it's one of the most requested things. I think that... Bantang reached diamond quite easy. That is very true. Lots of level 4 diamond Bantang. I really, like, I wonder if that's intended. Got a bunch of deer. We'll look and see what comes out of here, because they ought to flush in view. Because at some point, I really do want a male diamond bob like quail. Either they were further away. No, I hear them. There they are. Alright, got a female, female, small male, and female. Well, that was not worth the time. What could be the next great one? Rosy elk, wild boar, fox, roe deer. I think probably those would be the prime candidates. I still think black tail should be considered, though. Great one, stubble quail. When? No thanks. I'm good. I would rather not. Okay, we're just getting into kind of the good part of the river, at least for it seems like where we get the most males. Well, map is this, this is New England Mountains. Came out December of last year, so it's coming up on being a year old. And Way the Hunter, they should add a perk where when you spot a certain amount of different aged animals, like 250 youngs, adults, and matures, when you spot an animal, it will tell you its age and years, or even like... Now, I guess a range wouldn't help you much. No, I kinda could. Like, if you spot, let's say, a mature bison, and it's the first time you've ever seen it, mine is trying to identify a little bit by how gray its fur is. Like, it could be 16 years old, it could be 20 years old, and that makes a heck of a difference in knowing, like, how long to leave it. I think that could be good, I like that. Do you think they should add Great One Ducks and Geese that are banded? So that's typically the... Like, suggestion I see for Great One Waterfowl. I personally think... That's probably not, like, majestic enough. Like, you know what I mean? Great Ones have... Or are meant to have, I think. A certain level of majesty and mystique and stuff that I, I'm not sure that a banded waterfowl really achieves. Not to say I don't think a Great One Waterfowl species would be good, but I I probably think they'd have to do something else. Just got the Fable Silver with the Spoon Rack. Nice, man. Where all of you hunted in real life, and where would you like to hunt? I've never hunted outside of Texas. Alright, so I've hunted in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Texas, Tennessee. That might be it at the moment. This year I'll be adding Kentucky and potentially Indiana to that list. Great one magpie should be a pterodactyl, so I was going to bring up the waterfowl pterodactyl connection, but I thought not a lot of people would like that. We don't need a great one duck, should it be a fat duck or what? It could be. You know that big rubber ducky that they... Float around. I think I don't know if that's a Pittsburgh thing or not, but I know they had it sitting in the. Oh, what do they call that? That place where 
Like, they bring the boats and stuff for pirate games, dealer games and stuff. And don't tell me the name of the river, that's not what I mean. There's a... It's a name for that area, I'm pretty sure. Did any, did you get any of the diamonds yet? Sorry, just got here. None yet. We killed a troll rooster deer, so, you know, major surprise there. Now we're chasing bobcats. We've got... About 10 minutes left of their drink time. I don't know whether to go back to Rusa after that or jump to like for Hunga and look for Wigeon. We could go to Reventuli. That is an option. The problem with Reventuli is I think what I need to do is go to the southeast area down there where like most of the waterfowl tend to spawn. Literally take down all of our decoys other than Wigeon decoys. I just set up and hunt them there. I, I think that's maybe our best bet. Although we've done a lot of grinding, semi-grinding on Verhunga now. Shmool. Technically they missed the boat not adding Rocky Mountain Elk to New Zealand. I think that could have been neat, but it, it would have felt a little out of place to me. Like even though they are there, I know they're, I know that's a thing. It just would have felt weird. I think adding more unique characteristics to the white talent would be cool. Yet, um, I think it would be challenging. Like, with the system they have. Classic has a version of that with, like, stickers and sort of drop times and stuff. The problem is, when you look really closely at the rack, it's sort of like the times Plato molded onto it. Like, it's not a perfect, seamless thing. And I think for Classic, you know, a game that came out in 2009, that's okay. But Call of the Wild, with their standard of graphics and stuff, I'm not sure that would be, you know, something they'd be okay with. Like, being able to see that sort of seam where the time connects. Why the heck is the 223 not very powerful? I think what it comes down to is, when designing a hunting game, you have to have... Some did I say we shot it twice? It's too late now. Anyway, you have to have some calibers that are going to be more powerful than others. And in real life, like, small amounts of difference in, let's just say, energy foot-pounds for the sake of simplifying that. You know, in real life, that, that can be enough to make a difference. But in game, it has to be a notable difference. And I think some guns get the short end of the stick. Some guns get the long end of the stick, which I don't think is a saying. But there are definitely examples of guns. Honestly, maybe the 7 mils a good example of it. This probably more powerful or more, more versatile than it should be. But like, a great planes map with bison, whitetail, etc. I think that would be cool. It could kind of be a North America Verhunga. And what I mean by that is a fairly open map where you could see pretty far, spot a lot of animals, but it'd be North America species. It would, I think, turn into a New England, though. Like, without having, having a bunch of new stuff to be able to add, I don't know that the map ends up being really well accepted. Have you played other hunting games like Hunting Sim 2? I did play Hunting Sim 2. Probably have 10 to 15 videos on that. Um, I play Way the Hunter, I play the Hunter Classic. I've got a bunch of like playlists of playing old games like I did um, Big Game Hunter 2004. I did. It's it called Outdoor Adventures, I think. Deer Hunter 2005. At least one or two more, like, throwback series games, too. As for modern stuff, those three are really the only ones I play. I'm trying to think, but I don't think there's anything else. You think there's maps that Prayer Dogs make sense to add? You could put them on SRP, I think. Have you played Fishing Planet? A tiny bit. Like, literally a couple of minutes. Oh, that was... Uh, was that a rare? Are brown bobcats rare now? I thought it was red. Uh-oh. 
I think they're still common. Not common, I think they're uncommon. Speaking of throwbacks, you sure you sure you still don't want what are you saying? You sure you still don't want to do carnivores, OG? I Kyla can do that. That's her thing. You broke my brain. Hope you're proud. <laughs> Would you intend on hunting red deer in real life? In the right setting, I would. I think I'd want to hunt them like in Ireland or like somewhere where they're 100% wild, 100% free range. And probably I'd be looking for like a smaller stag than what you're used to seeing like on TV or in pictures or whatever. New Zealand, I'd, I would maybe do it. Because I know a lot of the... Because everything down there is sort of like, not everything, but most things are like huge private ranches and private property and stuff. They're generally so big that like the animals might as well be wild and many of them never even see the actual um, barriers. That's a mental thing with hunting that I'll eventually have to probably get over. But for the moment... Hunting in any sort of barrier, even if it's a million acres, it's just hard for me to mentally get past. When are you hunt? Uh, when are you going to South Africa to hunt there? I don't know. I think I'm more interested in seeing the animals there than hunting them personally. I like hunting in games and stuff. It's a different type of hunting entirely than what I'm used to here, and. I don't know, at some stage maybe I would do it, but it's, I very much like the way that I sort of hunt here, so we'll see. Switzerland's perfect, but very hard for hunting. Speaking of Switzerland, so Kyla got Taylor Swift tickets for her show in Switzerland next summer, which I think, I'm not going to the show, but I think I'm going to be there for the trip anyway. Literally like two weeks later, is Switzerland's chamois hunting season. I would have loved to have just like scheduled a chamois hunt for during that time frame. But alas, Taylor Swift said no you. I am from Ireland. Best thing is there is such huge populations of red deer. They cause a lot of trouble to farmers. You can hunt where you want. Uh, I have a mounted one I shot a few years ago. That's cool. My... Like, my idea of it is hunting them, like, in mountains and stuff like that, but I guess farmland red deer could be a thing. Extend that trip? It'd be such a long trip by then. Like, we can't bring Shadow with us. Probably my mom and dad are going to end up watching her, but that'd be, like, three weeks. I know Aaron is messed up. Taylor Swift knows what she's doing. She doesn't want me to have a good time. It's sad, really. You'll watch Shadow? How well can you deal with a dog crying for 12 hours a day? I don't think she actually does that. Like, she seems to have a good time with my parents, but she's usually not a huge fan of me leaving. Alright, so we've hit the end of Bobcat drink time. Let's scoot up here a little bit further because we might be able to see some that are leaving their zones. I, too, often cancel money-making ventures for money-spending ventures. Turns out those, those are typically more fun. What's the stance of Ultimate Hunter? Hype on that diet, I feel like. Yet, yeah, um... I kind of kept on waiting for, like, gameplay footage. I know there were, there was a bunch of videos on it. A lot of people who wanted it to kill Call of the Wild, because they weren't happy with the direction Call of the Wild was going in at the time, so there were a lot of videos like, this could be the game that finally kills Call of the Wild, right? And I didn't even cover it, because I just kind of figured, you know, eventually there'll be gameplay, and then there still isn't. I have my concerns about whether or not it's actually going to release. If it does, I'll 100% get on board, I'll, I'll give it coverage and stuff, but until I see gameplay, I just don't know what to expect. Go for Taylor stay for the chamois? Whatever it takes, right? Hello there. There's a max weight one at least, but not a very big one. Might be able to at least 
get the medal since it's going that way. Should be good. Bring Taylor Swift on the chamois hunt. There you go. She's all about hunting as far as I know. Definitely loves it. Can ski the Swiss Alps? Can you ski there in July, though? Not that I would want to. I'm not much of a skier. The bobcat calls are horrifying. Yeah, I feel like they could have come up with better audio for that. Nice little gold. Did you get your diamond rusa? No, we had the one troll and then that was it. We're just doing a little bit of everything today. You think they should add silencers and more scopes so that we can customize our guns a lot more? I'd be for... Definitely more scopes. I'd be for silencers if... They don't affect the gameplay. Like, if it's literally only what we hear the changes, I don't want it to alter how animals spook or the range at which animals spook. I think that's kind of easy enough as is. But I wouldn't mind. You know, basically, what I, if we could have silencers, I would play with the game at a higher audio level like this. I think it'd be good for, you know, hearing animal calls, hearing just... The ambient sounds that happen when playing Call of the Wild, but the gunshots are too loud. So I play, you know, at a slightly lower level so that the gunshots are more manageable, especially to someone wearing headphones or earbuds. Do you want the for the fallow great one huddle or just the one? Just the one. I'm I'm probably never gonna hunt for more than one great one of any species. I have said, like with the fallow deer, I'll probably go and kill maybe 100 or 200 just to kind of see what happens it doesn't take long to do that anyway only because it seems to be a bit of a trend that when someone gets a you know their first great one a lot of times the second one's like within a few hundred kills so just for the heck of it i may do that but even at that i'm really not that interested in doing it like for me i like the idea of getting one and that just being like you know, reach the mountaintop and that's it. I, I don't have the mental fortitude to grind for several. Do you miss the old gunshot audio? Yes and no. I mean, things like the 357 were way too loud, like it was bad. I don't miss that. I will say, so in what's going to be tomorrow's video, a uh, Hunt and Hunter Classic. I used a gun I probably haven't picked up in that game in, it might be five years. I really don't know when it came out or how long it's been since I've used it. A while. And it sounds amazing, and I do not mean the 4570 Buffalo. And just kind of hearing that, I wish more guns had a slightly more realistic sound to them. Call the Wild's okay, and I think they probably are a bit quieter than they would be in real life on purpose. But that gun just has a resounding boom. I misunderstood what you meant, Mel. I thought I thought there was like a possessive there. Listen, Papa, you didn't have to perfectly <laughs> predict it. Well done. <laughs> that is exactly what I used. Good job. I didn't think my small bot of hints would be able to give that away. Not that it's a surprise, really, but. Once you start, you can't drop. You got it. Do you remember a while back when the 300 was like eardrum? It was like eardrum popping loud? Kinda. Yeah, 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 I do. I remember, like, I would turn down the audio in those videos. Alright, what the heck? Let's go and shoot some vision for 30 minutes. We might kill two this entire time. If that. The Mongolian death worm? Is that like the Alaskan bullworm? This is my new account. Old one was mad. We oh, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I got gotcha you now. I was literally, I was thinking about who did I tell? I t told someone in the last like week about your piebald non tip. All right, 
bad. So we have one set up here where I've killed a bunch and another set up down there. Let's run between these lakes. A lot of times I find that does pretty good for widgeon flying over. That's realistic though, a 300 with a muzzle brick is, yeah, it's super loud and that's kind of why, like I said earlier, I wonder if Call of the Wild sounds are intentionally a little bit, you know, less loud so that it's more manageable for, for our poor little ears. Did I say less manageable? More manageable? They'll go over there and land and it probably would be smart to let them. We'll kill more that way if we just wait on them. We'll just work our way over to our tripod. Crazy, you still remember that 325 five ball I shot that March 2017? I didn't remember the score. I knew it was over 300, but I thought it was... I don't know why I was thinking 311 or something, but... I think it was your profile picture on... Steam or whatever. Somewhere I would see it a lot. Quieter. Less louder. I like... Much less noise. I don't know. That, that wasn't funny. Do you think they should add silencer? Uh, didn't I answer that? I think I did. If they would make a full auto pistol, it would be so fun to shoot at big groups of animals. Imagine like... Oh, what was the name of that thing? There was one in... Other than the Uzi. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was a handgun in GTA that was fully auto. And you just go through like a herd of spring buck or something and wipe them all out. I don't think that's even one of the ones we saw flying. He must have just been sitting there. AP pistol? Glock 18. Yes, that profile pick. That's the one. So apparently there's some just sitting right here too. Alright, let's get the far one. Probably gonna spook the ones right in front of us. And we'll at least get the spot. Those were the ones that were flying. I mean, what the heck? I think we hit the blind there. I saw like a spark. Well, I can't even see it. So that definitely was not the move. And I don't see it. All right, well, we got one. I guess that's better than zero. AP pistol seems right to me. Will you ever go back to Black Bear? Yeah, I mean, even if... So, like, we're gonna go to moose grinding first. Mostly because it's in the daylight. But even if we don't get a great one moose, let's say we go a month with moose. I'll start to rotate back and forth a little bit. Shoot, the, shoot some bears here and there. Moose here and there. We'll probably primarily focus on moose. If and until we get one. But we'll be doing some bear shooting too. Quick maths do 1867 times 198, uh, 12, 12, 12. What if it is, though? I feel like you asked me that because it would be a 12 thing. 1, 8, 6, 7. It's not. Dang. I believed. How many hours do you have played on this game? Watch a video and notice you had several millions in cash? Um... Let's spot all these widgeon first, and then I'll go and look. That guy's kind of darkish colored. The rest of them are very much not impressive. So, let's gonna make a stand up. Uh, hello, Steam Overlay. There you go. 6,498 hours. Is that the one? I thought he went higher estimate. That eh, must have been it. All right, well, this is a good spot. Maybe we should just lay in the blind. Seeing more here than we ever do. We'll let him land and see what we can kill. Want to thank you for the customer engagement. Love your content. Well, thank you, man. I, uh, <laughs> customers, viewers, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call them. The streaming part of my job is one of the absolute best part. Like, I really enjoy the interaction on these streams. Wish I had my $26 million dollars in real life, right? Imagine all the guns and property and hunting-related things you could own. 
feel like they could spook the land in that close. That's gonna spook. Speedy buggers, jeez. Okay, we'll just take a double and call it good. I'm convinced my schedule the next three months will have me not playing Call of the Wild till November at the earliest. Uh, at least the time change around that will give me more time in the evenings. Is there going to... Wait, I forget. Because they're changing that thing with Daylight Savings Time, aren't they? Do we still have the time change this November? Top five ducks in real life? Uh, let's see. Daffy. Donald. Those are the only ones I know. Do we kill all males? What are the odds of that? Uh, they need to backfill raccoon and fox on Layton. We do have them in the US. I think raccoons on Layton would be cool. I've always... So this goes back to when red foxes were just on Hirschfelden. I always thought they should be added to Layton. Mostly because I didn't enjoy hunting Hirsch and didn't have a diamond fox. How do they just change daylight savings? I'm like sure they're doing away with that. Because it's a bit of an antiquated concept. The whole thing was, I believe, a farming thing. Basically to, you know, give more daylight during the time of year where it's nicer out. It, it doesn't give more daylight, it adjusts the time with, like, so that after, like, if you had a regular job and then you also had a farm, after getting home from regular job, you could farm for longer until it got dark. When Miller Red Fox run common in 2018, yeah, that definitely was not a real thing. <laughs> a few days do not observe daylight savings. Really? I didn't know that. So I knew, like, I believe all or most of Europe, they observe it, but at a different, it's like two or three weeks later than us or something, at least us here in PA. Had to do the farming. No scientific reason behind it, just economic. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I'm what I'm getting at is not something that necessarily needs to stay around. Arizona doesn't do daylight savings. Okay. Had to do with train schedules in the early 1900s to be standardized around the country. That was time zones, though, not daylight savings time, I think. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was just the time zone thing. Benjamin Franklin came up with the idea when he was tying keys to kites. I think they should leave DST all year round, keep it like it is during summer. I thought that's what they were doing. Because my memory of it was when I was told that they were like looking at like adopting this whatever. Was it a bill or something to just be like, hey, we're done observing this? My thought was, oh good, I won't have to get up as early to deer hunt. I'm pretty sure that it would stay as is now. Do you guys have Roland Ward trophy animals in the US? Uh, not that I know of, but maybe. Took a break from the game in February and came back for Emerald Coast. Heard they changed something with spook radius since then. Does that apply to gunshots or movement? Uh, gunshots. When did that start? Maybe New England? I forget when. There was a fairly short period of time where, actually, what happened was, so gunshots used to just spook animals at 200 meters. Then they made it to where they spooked animals at 300 meters. Now, gunshots over 250 meters do nothing. Like, animals don't hear them. Unless you shoot them, obviously. Um, gunshots between 200 and 250 meters will alert the animal. So if you shoot twice, like in quick succession, that'll spook them. Under 200 meters, like always, that spooks them immediately. Speaking of farming, I'm still addicted to farming sim. I've been having so much fun with those streams on Sundays. Like having the, the whole operation that we have going on now with, you know, anywhere from four to six of us on that server, all like harvesting the same 
fields to and like all our money goes to the same place. I think that works really well. Puma on Rancho would be nice. It would be called Puma, huh? I was gonna say it'd be mountain lions there, but not, that's uh, in Mexico. I think they call them Pumas. Play farm to seminal wheel? Nah, just mouse and keyboard. I'm a lame non wheel haver. I could play on controller. I've thought about doing that before, but just the logistics of I gotta start the stream with the mouse and keyboard and I gotta navigate. Well, I could navigate the menu with the controller, but it's easier to do with the mouse. I just stick with it. Just got a troll ruse, but I botched it anyway. At least they troll a lot. Well, <laughs> that's the one time when I'll say that. As a controller player, don't. Fair enough. Thought you couldn't play farming sim with a controller on PC? Oh, maybe. I've just sort of always assumed you could. Hello? Okay, that was really far. But I... Oh, nope, I do see it. One little duck. What a sad existence. Gotta go up and deal with a bad migraine? No worries at all. Hopefully getting away from the blue light and chewing a little bit will, will help that. Those were no fun. That's gonna just be out of shotgun range. I guess we'll try to plink this out of the air. Which pre-trophy lodge, which pre-trophy lodge trophy would you wish to be able to have kept? Uh, the albino diamond moose, I think. I think that'd be my choice, because I've always said, like, the big animals, like big rares, specifically albino too, whether it's moose or cape buffalo, elk, lions even fall into this category, just like really big albinos look so cool. So to have a super rare like that and to not be able to keep it, I think that'd be the one I would choose. The hunting show night crew, I can't say I know of that one. Do you think they should add something similar to a great one to weigh the hunter to give you something bigger to go for? Because after a while, you have a ton of five stars and there's not much else to try to get. I think they'd be better off probably adding like more rares or maybe coming out with like new content at a faster rate or something. I think one of the problems that you can kind of see with great ones in Call of the Wild is you sort of reach a point where those five species are the like far and away the like the main thing that's hunted and in hunting for the so way the hunter might be different because of the way that works but in hunting for them and call of the wild you kind of miss out on like 95 percent of the game because you bounce around just from tent to tent and shoot stuff, right? Like, they're, you're missing the exploration side and the... Even, like, discovery side, if that makes sense. Like, one of my favorite things is going to a multiplayer server that I've never been on before and just seeing what I stumble into. And you can hunt for great ones that way, but the vast, vast majority is all grinding, obviously. Which is, like, fine. Obviously, the, I think the game has probably grown because of it. But I do think if EW would never tell you this, because of course they can't. You know, they wouldn't come out and say like, oh, we do it differently. The the correct answer as a or from a business perspective would be, no, like this is exactly how we wanted it. But I really think if you asked the devs, like off the record, they would probably say, eh, maybe we could have done it differently so that it didn't become, you know, so hyper focused on grinding. Like I just think it'd be it would be nice to need to hunt the entire map, kind of. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, Danny, thank you for the super chat. I know a lawsuit would happen, but the Great One Mother should just be Donald Duck and Daffy Duck. I'm trying to remember. Daffy Duck has, like, a little hat and shirt thing. Be interesting. Whatever happened to the Hunter Primal? So I, I think it was like a side project for the Hunter Classic developers. I'm pretty sure that was how it came about. And I don't know if, if maybe they got busy or maybe moved on to other studios or whatever. 
but the game was just kind of ultimately abandoned, and I still think it's the best dinosaur hunting game ever made. Like, it, it kind of sucks that it, or let me put it this way, it had the potential to be, with five species it probably isn't. But they had it, like, it literally, for my money, was perfect. Add more species into it, get like a Spinosaurus, um, you could have a lot more species of any sort of like small, fast, like different raptors and stuff. There's a bunch of different types of raptors and stuff in the real life that, you know, are now extinct. More big stuff would be probably the preference, and even more like Stegosaurus. Um, Brachiosaurus, these sorts of things, I just, they could have done so much more. That's basically what I'm saying, Billy. Like, if it wasn't a respawn, just a random chance. I think the, like, the best, so you have to be careful about adding something like that, too. Because what it invites in a game like this is probably spawn mashing to a degree. So I don't know how you would make it spawn mash proof. But if you could do that, I think the ideal would be just that random chance. Same ducks? Yeah. That was just them calling to go down to our decoys. We'll just slowly work our way. We'll actually go on the other side of the lake and try to spot them. Imagine you don't grind and you only find a great one once in five years. What a feeling. It, so, most people probably wouldn't like that. I'm not... Like, I genuinely can't tell if, if you're really going for the what a feeling thing, or if it's a little bit of sarcasm, like... Nobody wants to play a game five years to find something, because there's going to be both sides of that perception, regardless of how you meant it. For me, I would like that. Like, it took me ten years to find a 200 Whitetail and Classic, but the feeling was unmatched for anything I've ever shot in any other hunting game. Most probably wouldn't like that. Most would want things, you know, maybe every few months to be able to run into something like that. I'd even be cool with that, though. One check every five hours of play where it's a one in a thousand chance. If one is present on a map, it can't spawn another. After 72 hours of playtime, it despawns and the whole thing begins again. That is pretty spawn mash proof. So long as there isn't any kind of, you know, weird, like, reset your population thing, because I know that would be abused if that would work. They could probably have a check for that, too. I like it. No sarcasm, the value would be higher? I, yeah, I definitely think it would be. Like I said, I, probably the vast majority of players wouldn't want it to be that rare. I don't even know that I would necessarily want it to be that rare, but if it was that rare, it would be, like, actually finding one would be an insane feeling. Wasn't Prime on an intern project? I'm pretty sure it was a side project of, like, you know, what's the, employees, not interns. But, you know, similar idea anyway. Da, 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 we got a mail in here somewhere. Guess not. Not in shotgun range anyway. Those numbers are just a placeholder? Yeah, I gotcha. I kind of like it. it. They wouldn't change it. Like, grinding is a huge part of Call of the Wild, and like I said, I think it, the game has probably gotten bigger because of it. A lot of people like it, but it has strayed a little bit from the whole... A little bit's an understatement. It has strayed a lot of it from hunting. But again, like, Call of the Wild was never meant to be a super simulation style game. So maybe, again, maybe that's kind of what they wanted. If you made it more rare, people would just mod the game more? Sure, but, um, there are, there could be ways for the devs to implement something that would be a tell that it's modded. There are games out there that when someone installs a cheat or a mod or whatever, it basically lets you do everything 
and then right before you can complete the game, it'll either crash, lock up on purpose and delete your save, or like send you some kind of message saying like, I forget the game. There's a game that has like the final boss where it tells you that you're a cheater and you can't beat it. Oof, killed a 219 for Elgo, but accidentally used a 7 mil. That is a big one. Don't think I've even shot a hog deer yet. It's because you're an addict to Bantang hunting. Murph will do a new scope in the next content update. I don't even necessarily know, you know, when it comes to adding a new scope, would it be... Do we want, like, a new reticle? Do we want more zoom? Do we want something in between the Hyperion and the Argus, for instance? I'm not even sure... Because I say I want a new scope. I don't even know, like, what I would actually want out of a new scope. One that auto-aims at ducks for me, because yikes. Literally in the middle of shooting one as you say that. A Bantang or a Hog Deer? I think a time limit on fast traveling like in Classic would maybe be the only thing to cut down on grinding the same 10 zones, at least with the current spawn system. Then again, that also has issues. Yeah, like, I, I totally get, with the size of the map and stuff, I totally get why they removed... Whatever you want to call that, the time constraint or whatever. I get, like, it's good that they're two different games. Like, if Call of the Wild was just kind of classic, but better than classic would have died. So, I don't know. It, it might be a conversation that's not even really relevant to Call of the Wild at the end of the day. I still think hunting a little bit, you know, slightly more hunting in the search for a great one would be good. Anything good today? Uh, we had a troll, Rusadir. And one max weight estimate, Bobcat that turned out to be a 7. The drilling scope is the best one in Call of Wild, of course, that only works on one weapon. Yeah, I do like the drilling scope. It's it's actually very good. What's up, Nathaniel? I'm from Central PA. Have you ever heard of Glendale Lake before? Oh, yeah. Fish Glendale plenty of times. Been a while. Last time we were on Glendale... Might have been like my grandma's 80th birthday, which I'm trying to think how old she is. Maybe it's 85th. I would, I'm thinking it was four or five years ago. We like rented a pontoon out on Glendale and sailed all around for a while and did a little fishing. I want more render distance. I just think like a lot of PCs could handle Call of the Wild at six, 800, maybe even more uh, render distance. Meters. Pfft, I screwed up the way I said that. But, uh, I don't think, like, consoles, they struggle to get 60 FPS as is. And you get at a kind of fuzzy line of, like, if you make PC better, because, you know, you've been around long enough, you remember what it was like when they were struggling to get PC and console releases to be you know, in the same year, <laughs> let alone that this on the same day. A lot of console players felt left out. They felt underappreciated. They felt, you know, like EW didn't care about them, really. It probably wouldn't be good to make the game better in such a significant way on PC over console. You still play the Angler? Don't you think it would have been better off being a major DLC in the Hunter? I actually don't, um... Mostly because the amount of probable bugs that it would have had to come with. Like, to add something as big as a fishing DLC to a game that was already five years old and had a bunch of already existing code and stuff, like, specifically around the water. Like, they would have had to change how the water works, how other animals interact with the water, how the fish would interact with the water, how probably the players could interact. I just imagine it would come with a lot of bugs, and I do think they were better off building that from the ground up. Did it succeed like I would have hoped? I think they're doing okay with it. Like, the game is still being improved to this day. 
I did think it would at least be on the same engine as the Hunter. I think maybe that would have been better. As far as do I still play it, I'm planning on getting back to it within the next week or two. Again, like when Emerald Coast came out in Call of the Wild, that was our primary focus. But we've been back to Wade the Hunter a little bit. I'm going to get back into the Angler a little bit. I like playing it. I sort of enjoy going after the legendaries. I wish they were done differently. But it's fun to, you know, go out every now and then and chase something big like that. Can you cheat on console? It's much more difficult, but people do it. If you buy a console, you accept lower performance for lower price? Uh, it sorta. It depends. Some consoles, like especially the newer gen consoles, are actually pretty solid now, performance-wise. I think if you bought a PC for the same, like if you bought a pre-built PC for the same price as like the new gen consoles, I don't know that you would get as good a performance. I know you said for a lower price. If you built a PC, for sure I think you could get better performance for around the same price range. I don't know... Pre-builds? For, for the price of a, a current gen console, I don't think you could achieve what they achieve. So trying to level 5 fellow that maxes at 247? Guaranteed trolls are just the best, aren't they? Everybody's favorite thing. The angler's on the same engine, just a newer model of it, like Unreal 4 versus 5. Okay, so this might be a stupid question, but why does call like the Hunter Call of the Wild look so much better? Like the the dynamic lighting, um, I even think just the textures and stuff in general look better. Like, is there is there a reason for that then? And actually, uh, for me, the angle runs worse. But a pre-built would run Call of the Wild no problem. In that price range, yeah, it probably would now. A pre-built. Let's say for 600 bucks. I actually don't even know. What's the PS5 cost? I go on like Best Buy. Best Buy. I think I'm close. 500 bucks. I think a pre built for 500 bucks when Call of the Wild came out wouldn't even have been close to running it. Now, you could probably get it to run. Not on max graphics or even close to max graphics. But lower settings, yeah. I'd say you probably could. Not sure about this angle. It'll get him. I'm struggling so bad on Xbox with my white tail grind. I'm 793 in. I messed up three times, but I don't know what to do. I feel like giving up. I mean, I totally get it. Uh, Follow-up shots and stuff on console are considerably more difficult, and that definitely slows the grind down. The best thing I would say is just, you gotta be able to stick with it. Um, you're talking about messing up diamonds, I'm assuming. Probably just take your time a little bit more with them, except that maybe some of the other animals are gonna get away, and just to really take your time on that shot of the potential diamond, but at the end of the day, Messing up diamonds kind of sucks, but the ultimate goal is the great one, right? So if you mess up a diamond here or there, it doesn't affect anything, truly. That is a big old group of buns. Still got one. And not like a halfway decent one in there. Ah, so close. Nope. Uh, if they were ever able to make waterfalls on Call of the Water Engine, waterfalls, waterfalls on Call of the Water Engine, which past mask would you love to see them added? Hmm. For Hunga, for sure. Like just small ones. Because it's got a bunch of, like, cliffs and stuff where that would work. SRP would be decent. 
What about Medved, like some ice falls with a little bit of water running? All of them? That's a good answer, to be honest. I shot at a guaranteed diamond world beast I tracked for two hours, but I got killed by an aggressive cape buffalo and now I can't find it? Uh, hunting pressure is not helping you out? Like, go to the center of the hunting pressure to where the blood should be? And if you own a bloodhound, bring it with you? I do be thinking, whatever we kill here, rabbit or potentially that lion is going to be our last kill. Wouldn't mind shooting the rabbit. Or shooting at. Real question is, which map has the best icon? Man, Medved's good. Layton... Layton, New England, SRP, and Verhunga are the only ones without an animal in the icon. I think Medved might have the best. Your content's just so incredible, I subscribe. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. You call it icons pretty good. I'll give you that. I like the detail on the bear, though. Speaking of detail, these poor guys need an upgrade. They didn't look that bad when they came out. Compared to the mountain hare in particular and like the antelope jackrabbit and stuff, some of the other bunny-like species, there's a there's a word for rabbit species that I can't think of. It's a complicated word. They, they just don't stack up. Is these different? I think they are. Good to know. Like this area is apparently loaded with these things. We'll keep an eye out for that in multiplayer. Lagomorphs, that's the one, yes. No way I'd ever remember that. I was trying to think of that word. Uh, I can't even remember why. I shot a rabbit in a recent video and I wanted that word and couldn't think of it. Anyway. I do think on that note, that's going to do it for the stream. Unfortunately, none of the diamonds that we we're looking for, though at least we got to hunt for everything, killed a couple of widgeon. Frankly, unless you kill the entire flock, that doesn't help much of anything, but at least we got to, you know, see how effective our spots are here in Barunga. Did a bobcat run, and yet another level 5 troll roost to hit the ground. Eventually, one's gonna have to make diamond. Maybe by accident, maybe it won't even want to make diamond. But it's gotta happen. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. So, as always, thank you guys for watching it. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for all the support. And I'll see you in tomorrow's video going back to the Hunter Classic and do a little bit of trophy on. Bye.